down everyone and we're here with nvidia and their new patch release should be 441.66 this introduction is going to be very fun as we're already running the time spy and it running into i've been run running some background tests between the posts and pre's and seeing like what are the changes and there are a lot of cool things Seems like with AMD's introduction of their brand new 2020 Adrenaline, we're even already breaking the uh, year already out of hand, even though it's rocking the 1912.2, it does rock some impressive stuff that would push NVIDIA to kind of push some more stuff inside of there. We'll be diving into the patch notes as well. I already have it pulled up right over here so we can kind of go through what's going down for as far as the release notes and you can see for as far as the table of contents it's going to roll out a whole bunch of fun stuff and it's going to go down what has changed in the most maximum settings so eat at your heart's content for knowledge if you want to and this is definitely linked directly down below in the description uh, besides that there's a more simpler way to kind of be breaking down usually directly inside of reddit which I definitely love but it's one of my favorite portions as we kind of bring it over a little bit more into a readable function with a happy face and a thread ripper there in the background. Now looking at that situation is the game ready driver fixes and the optimization inside the situation of what's going down for as far as the Sorry, I'm, I'm running fire strike now in the background. Uh, the new game ready driver also provides bug fixes and other things with the Mech Warriors 5 making the list in addition to the release and providing the optimization of Detroit Become Human. Seems like both AMD and NVIDIA were making this as more of a passing torch to make sure that this game worked, which is pretty cool. The G-Sync's compatibility in the monitors and the list of the G-Sync compatibility displays over 60 options in addition with MSI the mag 25 one rx as well as the viewsonic xg270 monitors because of uh, amd's adoption across the nvidia portions there's going to be even more coming out to the portion of where g-sync will basically cater to everything um, making it a little bit more formidable um, out there inside of there now coming down to what were the fixes inside of what they have coming down to the gameplay portions of what we're looking at inside of there you can see that the release resolved the application crashes during the playback in the black magic raw coding media um, for all you editors out there for resolve davinci in that situation so i'm hoping that that might actually help with me too because I've had um, situations where I couldn't get it to run myself um, but anyways past that portions in the Forza 7 the game starts shutter racing as far as a few laps inside the situation and so the the Fallout 76 making the list. Oh my, I, I almost stuttered there when I looked at that. I was like, ooh. As the game frame right drops and the G-Sync enabled portions. As going down to the GTX 1080 Ti, there is a 5.1 and 5.7 surround sound option in the Windows sound property. As far as the 1060 6 gigs the nvidia control the nvidia control panel is reported an incorrect gpu frame buffer size so those are things that will be a little bit more accurate important open issues things that are completely across the boards the windows 7 has world of warcraft and the battle in the directx 12 the game crashes and switches from directx 11 to 12 modes in windows 10 the Sniper Elite and Tomb Raider also making the list yet again for as far as the frame rates is not as capped at the display fresh rate for the V-Sync enabled in DirectX 12. Windows 10 also recognizes that Grand Theft Auto 5 is still on that list and Nvidia is working with the application developer hopefully to fix that among if anything um, Thanks for Rockstar's Red Dead as well. So with that being said, and all those fun and kind of fun things we actually were able to adopt in, the link down below where you can actually download this. You can have both the sources directly for the studio driver and right there and for as far as the situation of the source of the download of the game ready driver. I really need to try to decide the uh, studio driver one of these days in order to see if I can actually get some stuff done. Having a portable rig now with having the AMD link 
like there are like other portions of hopefully like maybe they'll have that like where you can kind of create from the go with nvidia like that that would be really cool like an nv link where you can kind of peer in and do your work that'd be great maximize by 2080 ti from afar but you do have both of these um this being the game ready driver which we're testing and then you have your studio drivers which are more you know studio-esque but with looking at where our game score is and we're kind of getting our portions we're gonna go ahead and look at a few comparisons real fast okay so some things to compare looking at where you can kind of see the two tests we're going back to back the install of where we have before where the 7042 versus the 7915 are drastic seems like it kind of took a tank a little bit for as far as there and even running the overclocks back to back where i had them and now these standards where they were kind of just sitting right there they both had the fan to the maximum but it was just optimal settings it wasn't anything touch past that just the fan going up i wanted to always do that with a base test to see what it could really run with and it was actually quite impressive but even touching the the um, power itself it just proves that if you keep a gpu cool you can do really great crap um, looking at that portion um, now with that overclock though I did have to turn it down one point so that would affect it a tiny bit as you can see that the 2130 megahertz versus the 21 clean megahertz in the frequency of where it ran it crashed one too many times and I was just like well I'm kind of pushing it a little hard without actually hooking up like a cold array to it so you can kind of see right here in this portion right here I would like to say that if I did have the um, Clockerton run inside of there that you know I would probably be seeing even better gains past that because it seems like even though I wasn't able to hit the home run for as far as the base test as far as the overclock test it, it did come in a little short as well um, not being at the, the 90 mark so this seemed like the last OS seemed to be a little bit more stable so let's go ahead and do a little bit more comparisons so now looking at a direct X12 implication, as we looked at both the kind of ultras, the extreme portions of both of them, uh, you can see that the testing right there at the 21 frequency was very well established across the board where it was able to run really well. And that landing a 7243 test uh, coming across where the frequency was a little bit lower on the first time around for as far as what the testing mark might have been. And that is just an irregularity rather. Uh, I don't understand why it went down, but it might have just been running back-to-back -back test maybe it was hot and throttling just a tiny bit and was just like no i'm a tired but that might have factored into maybe the headroom of 10 points so that's very nominal i'd like to say that it's probably back to back and if it ran at maybe 100 or the 130 it probably would have beaten it versus right there where you have the base setting again at the 1860 and the 1860 matching up with the cold cold test and you can see that there is actually an improvement um in this base test so it seems like directx 12 did get a nice pass for as far as um update to update and what it can actually show let's go look at a few others before we start running the port royal test now, one thing I want to point out before we roll those situationable tests, because we'll have to run the time spy and port royal together in order to get some more finite portions so we can see the B side of this. As you can see, I pulled up the AMD charts, and these are the recent ones that I ran to last well last night rather for as far as their brand new update and its increasements, and it's creeping pretty close on the door of 9000 which is pretty cool for just the portionable point of running that and that's not too bad for where it goes but the 2080 ti still takes the crown as you can see some of the elite like actual physical portions are almost twice if not a little under that for as far as what the old overclocks but let's look at what this overclock will look at at its full maximum now shall we Okay, so now with looking at both the tests back to back, these are perfect identical RAM runs of the frequencies inside of the GPUs. So you can see that the clock frequencies and everything else kind of match. For 1860 to 1860, you see that there is a rather increasement. So there's a good benefit to the DirectX 12 and 1080p versus the 4K where we watched it kind of increase a tiny bit for as far as what ends up happening. Um, but it seems like for as far as what we have with DirectX 11, we'll kind of get into a little bit more digestion in a split second. Now looking at where we go inside of Time Spy, the 2085, and the 2085 again going right over there, you can see the frequency locks inside of there. Now there is a really big gain actually in this one where you can kind of see that we have a 1497 almost hitting that 15 
Like, that would have been great. I mean, that, I, that was so shy of it. Uh, but let's go ahead and run our Port Royale and kind of see what we end up getting inside of these situations as we can get more benchmarks and more tests. Again, just a flashback to what Time Pie Extreme was so we can kind of see the comparison. Also wanted to recap on the DirectX 11 where you can kind of see the shoot across scores for the 21 frequency, which goes 30 above, which I kind of felt like that would close the gap a lot more um, for as far as the situation. And I am running the Port Royale test underneath this. Um, so it should be done pretty shortly now looking at where the base tests go back to back where it kind of goes in that situation You can see definitely a more of an improvement when it comes down to the fire strike ultra Looking at those progression points going up from there now again This is where the the top out is where you can see the most recent one where the ultra was ran So you can see that the increasement goes down unfortunately rather so if you're reading from left to right the increasement falls on DirectX 11 versus where DirectX 12 it excels So looking at our Port Royale test you can see straight out the bat since they're just back to back and by themselves on there on the situation that you can see that there are some gains that are going to come from the ray tracing there you really using those tensor cores in order to kind of push it rather than the CUDA cores inside of this update to get some drastic improvements as you can kind of see in this situation now I am running a little bit of a more heavier overclock but these are matched in the situation if I was able to compare we kind of go this to this to this so this, looking at the frequencies and what they ran at, you can see that the kind of inconsistencies in the situation of where it would kind of run versus where it's kind of there, then fully open, then having a situation where they're overclocked and then having the overclocked with the newer OS. So it's like, it's, it's kind of a topsy-turvy type situation, I like to think, in the war you really have the last OS working better when it was kind of like in its own little range versus where this one comes into gameplay and we have a little bit more of a steadier situation and it's overclocked for like the tensor cores it seems even with the full fan full blast it's like you're getting way more usage out of the physical portion because the ones on the right right over here are the top two tests which were the most recent ones versus the top two bottom ones which it wasn't really doing much but i do notice that there's a inconsistency point but look at the difference i mean yeah the this one to this one is very much drastic, but this to this is actually goes down and goes up. So that's kind of very interesting. See what happens when it was like more tuned. Now looking at where the fire strikes ended, this is actually more of an interesting situation where I pull up the lineups. Now looking at fire strike extreme, you can see right there right off the bat that there are some gains to be had here. The first two score tests right up on the very top or should more of the more recent, the 441.66 being the variant inside of there. But you can see again that it drops a little bit, <coughs> but increases for score points as it balances out throughout the computer test. Looking at where it comes down to the base test too, you even see a little bit of a testing. So let's look at the regular fire strike itself. And this is where it gets rather interesting. Now, if you look across the board, you'll see two tests that are ranked 1905 which are basically the bases. The only difference is literally is just, well, the update. If you look at the update before it, it almost literally tanks it. It's like almost not even like really too much existence as you can kind of see where the matching portions of where we can kind of get down to where we are right now. The, the further tests way, way, way down here versus the more recent one where we have directly up here the last test of the basic the evening and you can see it kind of tanks down so it kind of seems like DirectX 11 right now is a little bit of a hot mess it, looking at the the base of the old one it, it gained so much more but if you look at where the overclock is it, it still loses but if you look at extreme it gains just a little bit in the overclocked testing and then in the ultra it loses some too but DirectX 12 and Port Royale show consistency of strength so that's probably where they went. So DirectX 12, yes. DirectX 11, meh. Port Royal, yeah. So that ray tracing should hopefully be seeing some really cool stuff for as far as that. So everyone, that is pretty much what I have today for as far as the news. If you are new to the network, 
you can always hit a like share and subscribe helps me as a creator absolutely free and techies and techettes you can always take advantage of the links that i've dropped down below a lot of the tech that i've reviewed as well as what i've tested in my you and my own personal rigs are listed down below that you can get into the links and build your own rigs or add on to the other stuff that i've tried out throughout all that stuff so thank you all appreciate everyone and their joining in this portion of the update and i will see you guys and gals in the near future and if you subscribe today who knows maybe we can go back to twin pines and we can change the future and make this update even better Ooh, you have to subscribe to find out but anyways all subscription humor aside thank you so much for joining me for this very fun update and watching dual updates it was it was a crazy day all day today was just bench testing and bench testing but it was it was worth it and honestly looking at it like this this was not a bad update but this was not a challenging update to amd's challenging update to nvidia's update today so i'd say the winner if we were looking update to update is definitely well amd but nvidia does a damn good job for as far as polishing up and hopefully fixing some stuff but if you have any issues drop a comment down below We'd definitely like to hear what you have at the tech community um in any field unfortunately like there is always issues everywhere but i'll see you guys and gals in the future later